Hi, I'm Bernie Thompson. I'm the founder of Pluggable Technologies. So Apple is about to release macOS 10.15 uh, called Catalina, and it's actually contains some of the biggest changes uh, for application and driver compatibility of any recent uh, macOS operating system. So what's changed in Catalina? Well, number one, um, apps now need to be notarized by Apple. Uh, for some time, apps have had to be signed by the developer so that you know, you know who's developed the software uh, that you're installing on macOS. Um, Apple's now doing some additional steps of verification, checking for any kind of uh, security issues, and then they're doing their own signing of the application, and that's what's called notarization. So basically, you've got a, a kind of a double check, the, the company you're getting the software from, and then also Apple doing that double check. So that's one big change. The second big change with Catalina is 32-bit macOS applications will no longer work. So if you have any 32-bit applications at all uh, on your macOS system, when you upgrade to Catalina, they'll stop functioning and you'll need to find 64-bit updates for those. And then the third big change, and the one that actually impacts us the most uh, as a company that sells devices that work with macOS is um, Drivers, which is the software that makes hardware work, is moving from inside the kernel with kernel extensions up to what's called user mode, which is where applications normally run. Um, and they're now in, in Mac OS 10.15 called system extensions. And they're developed with something called driver kit, whereas it used to be called IO kit. So a lot of that stuff is kind of inside details, but in short, um, drivers that you currently have that enable hardware to work on your current Mac OS system when you upgrade to Catalina many of those uh, third-party drivers are going to break and they'll need an upgrade. Sometimes that upgrade will be available. Sometimes there'll be you know, maybe a gap in time where there actually is no upgrade at all available uh, and you may have hardware that stops functioning. So boy, this is actually you know, kind of jarring and, and something to think about uh, before you do the Catalina upgrade. Um, but um, companies uh, like us are trying to get out information for our products on what works and what doesn't and what you need to do to upgrade. And uh, we're gonna have that detail for one of our products here in this video. Today we are going to talk about how to update and install the drivers for your ASICs pluggable gigabit adapters after you've updated to Catalina, which is Mac OS 10.15. The first thing that you'll want to do is to open up your web browser and you want to go to https colon forward forward slash pluggable dot com forward slash drivers forward slash USB three ethernet forward slash. Once you're on our website for the drivers here, please click on the button for Mac. You'll need to click on this link here to download the package. Let's go into our downloads folder so that we can begin the installation process. Okay, go ahead and double click on the package to open it. And now here is the welcome screen for the installation. Go ahead and click continue to begin. Please feel free to review this information and then click install when ready to move on. You'll be prompted to put in your password. Please do so and then click install software. You'll get this little pop-up message here that states that the software will restart once it's installed. So please be sure that you are ready to do so and then go ahead and click continue installation. Now we can see that the process is going, but then unfortunately, all of a sudden, this is what will likely come up for you. Now, if you click OK, what you'll see is that this window will pop up again and it will continue to do so if you simply click OK. What you need to do is go to the Apple menu, System Preferences, security and privacy. Let's pull this out of the way. Now here we see down here, system software from developer ASICS Electronics Corporation was blocked from loading. So what you wanna do is click on the little lock here. This will ask you to put in your password. 
and click to unlock. Make sure that your setting is set for apps from the app store and identified developers. Now let's click the button to allow. Okay, we go back over to our installation. Please note it will hang for a little bit, but then it will pick up. Go ahead and click OK. Now that the installation was successful, you'll want to go ahead and click Restart on your Mac. Once you click Restart, you will likely get a little pop-up here that asks if you want to move the driver package installer into your trash. Please feel free to move it to your trash or keep it if you need to. Now, once you choose to keep or move it to the trash, your computer will restart. Okay, now that you have finished installation and restarted your computer, go ahead and plug the adapter in to your Mac. Now, one thing that we do suggest to make sure that the connection goes through is to turn off your Wi-Fi signal. Go ahead and turn that off, and now go into your system preferences and network. And now we see that the adapter is getting a self-assigned IP address, and now it is connected and ready to go. So we can go ahead get online, and here we are. You're all set up and ready to surf the internet. So macOS 10.15, uh, Catalina changes quite a bit. Uh, hope that was helpful in terms of understanding what to do uh, with our devices. But if you have any questions at all, um, we're writing a series of blog posts and doing a series of videos to help you out. Uh, we'll have more links down in the description of this video. And if you have any questions at all, please email support at pluggable.com at any time, and we're happy to help. Thanks.